nothing can strike fear into the hearts of a family more than an investigation of child abuse or neglect brought by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department has total and absolute power to thoroughly investigate any allegation of child abuse or neglect. And regardless of the nature of the allegation, regardless of the family, the department will do so. The department has the power to come into your home. The department has the power to interview your children. The department has the power to contact school and medical professionals, all in the name of protecting children from suspected abuse or neglect. Families need to be prepared. The families need to be knowledgeable about this process. Why? Because many times the department will ask you and your family to take corrective actions that could affect you and your children for months, possibly years to come. Namely, in many instances, the department could ask a parent alleged of committing child abuse or neglect to vacate the home and separate from the children. In some instances, the department can ask that you voluntarily place the children with an alternate caregiver. These are significant events in your life and significant events in the lives of your children. For over 30 years, families have been turning to our firm for help in these most difficult times. Here it's important for me to express that a divorce lawyer is not a CPS lawyer. There's a huge distinction there. We're former assistant district attorneys. We've worked in many, many child protective services cases over these 30 years in different capacities. We know the system, we know the procedures, we know the persons involved. So here's our approach to CPS. Number one, we dialogue with the CPS people. We engage in an active, constructive conversation. We want to identify exactly what are the facts that have been brought to CPS's attention? What is the basis for this investigation? And are those facts, are those facts true or not? So that's step one. Step two is this. If, in fact, there are issues that are, have been identified that suggest that there are risk factors in the home that could lead to child abuse or neglect or that have led to child abuse or neglect, we want to identify those risk factors and talk about what preventive measures can be put in place in the most least invasive manner possible to address those risk factors. What services are necessary? What services can be offered by CPS that are reasonably calculated to help a family improve? Here's our main point in this situation. We want families together. Many times these services can be completed with the family living intact in the same home, healing. Finally, number three, we want to get real clear with CPS as to when they're going to go away. We have to identify where is the finish line. If the family has created or, or finished their services and we believe those risk factors are controlled for a family, we advocate for that family because that's the goal here is to move through this process as quickly as possible to keep families from being overly intimidated and to keep families from being taken advantage of. Listen, nobody wants child abuse. Nobody wants child neglect, but families have rights that need to be protected.